Hey there friends, what's going on? This is David Potts with Song Notes and a video lesson today where I want to talk about the key of C and show you a little cheat sheet I made. Now this is actually an eight page PDF. This is all the printed out. You can hear that sort of weight right there, right? I have it on the screen here. I'm really excited to show you this because what I'm gonna do in this cheat sheet is show you a big lay of the land for the key of C. Anytime you're playing a song in the key of C or you're working on just certain exercises in that key, there's a lot of stuff I cover in here and show you. For example, I'll talk about the notes, the chords in the key of C, you know, common chord progressions, I'll talk about some chord voicings, you know, whether you're playing bar chords or you're working about on your triads and you're doing some thin string stuff, or maybe you want to sound like, you know, Joni Mitchell or, or uh, the Beatles and play, you know, some Blackbird style chords. I'll also talk about the fretboard, you know, talk about how you can look at it in the key of C with note names as your label, or you can look at the intervals of the scale, or you can look at intervals with the one, the three, and the five highlighted, which is really good for learning the, the major scale positions. I also talk about uh, just some general quick tips when you're playing in a key of C, right? Easy ways to play the F chord that don't involve barring. Talk about the relative minor of C major, which is A, A minor, right? Talk about the dominant seven to tonic transition, G7 to C. Uh, what else do we got here? More quick tips, this sort of quick C to F to C transition. One of my favorites to quickly throw in for easy flourish. Talk about easy ways you can add walk downs in the key of C. It's actually really good for a uh, really long sort of walk down. Most of the open keys, you can't do it as cleanly as you can in the key of C. And then ways to add one finger flourish, whether you're adding like your pinky to, you know, one string or you're taking a finger on and off. Talk about that, link out to some stuff that makes use of that. And then finally, I link out to all the songs I've made, or at least the popular ones that, that are in the key of C. So each of these will take you out to my website if you click on it. Let's see, click on it, open it in Safari, and then we have, you know, you can watch my video lesson on it, you can get my sheet music for it, and it's just a cool way to quickly access all the stuff. Let's get into this one, y'all. Eight pages, you can get the PDF over at my website, playsongnotes.com. I'm gonna go through this now and just sort of tackle, or give you a quick explanation of, of what I'm including in here, how to think about this, how to use this. If there's anything I'm missing, let me know. If there's anything anything that um, you want to see more on that I don't have lessons for, let me know. Anyway, thanks for watching this far, but keep on watching because I think you'll pick up a thing or two or five or ten as you go through this. And again, you can get this hefty PDF at my website, playsongnotes.com, lesson 388. But let's get into it, y'all, and I'll see you on the other side. Let's do it. So the first page of this thing, uh, what I do is I sort of show you a couple things. The notes in the key of C, right? I'll talk about the chords in the key of C, and then talk about chord progressions really quick, okay? Now as far as the notes, there are 12 notes in uh, Western music basically. I have a separate lesson on that. If you need help learning those 12 notes and sort of seeing how they map out to the fretboard, I have something already that can help you there. But basically in the key of C, the seven notes we have are C, D, E, F, G, A, B. This is a nice key because there's no sharps and no flats. If you're playing on a piano, it's actually just all the white keys. Those, that's the key of C. So usually on piano at least, that's the first thing you learn. Um, but yeah, those are the notes. And with those notes, we can create these chords. Now, I'm not gonna get into how these chords are constructed, what's the difference between a major and a minor chord, but just know that right here, I'm showing you a few things. One is the name of each chord. So we have a C major, a D minor, an E minor, an F, a G, an A minor. Now, normally when you're learning music theory stuff for the seventh chord in each key, you're going to get a diminished chord, meaning it would be B and D and F, technically, right? It'd be diminished. But in this example, I'm doing a G over B chord. And the reason why is just in practical terms, I don't know if I've ever in 20 years of playing guitar played a B diminished chord ever, but this G over B I play all the time. And you'll notice something about these seven chords is that the, um, the bass note of each chord is going to match the letter that the chord is based off of. So for B, for, for, for the seventh tone actually, right? Uh, so this is a B. If we were to play another B, you could play the second fret of the fifth string. To, to construct a chord off of that, the G over B is a very common one we use in our walk downs, right? Going from a C to a G over B to an A minor to a G, right? And all I did right there is if you look at the bass notes I just played, I basically went from, uh, well, I started with a C because that's sort of home base, but then 
I went to the B and the A minor and the G. So basically, uh, these are the main chords in the key of C. Now, sometimes you'll play songs in the key of C that use chords not shown here. Like you might have an E major or an F minor or a D7 or something. Those are borrowed chords. That's something that we can cover in a different video. But the main chords that are built off of the notes in the key of C are right here. So I have this mapped out on page one for you. Um, I have the notes and the chords as well. You can see right here if this is something that's interesting to you. Um, the quick cool thing about this is if you look up at the notes, you'll see that basically you're almost like skipping, like this is a C major, right? It's C, E, and G. To make it the next chord, the D minor, it's D, F, A, right? To make the next chord, the E minor, it's E, G, B. To make the next one, it's F, A, C, right? This is an F major chord. That's a cool thing that when I learned piano growing up, it was very helpful to sort of learn. Anyway, I have this here on page one for you. Now I also have chord progressions mapped out. Um, just a quick, uh, the idea here is to show you that, hey, chord progressions are a handy thing to know about. These are example chord progressions. There's effectively like countless chord progressions you could come up with, but there's, um, you know, there's a lot of them that are just sort of classics. And I'll, I'll show you here. I've written these out using the Roman numeral notation. I think that's very helpful to do. It's a sort of uh, universal way of referring to chord progressions. And these Roman numerals will sort of be consistent even as you change keys, right? So if someone says, hey, we're going to play a one, one, four, five, what that means is whatever key you're in, you're going to play the one chord for two measures or whatever, and then the four chord and the five chord. In this case, it's C, F, and G. So, you know, C, C, F, G, right? This is a one, four, five. We're staying on the one for two measures. The song I always think about this is American Music by the Violent Femmes, right? I like American music. You like da -da -da -da. But again, I'm sure there's many other songs that use that particular progression. Um, a couple other ones here that are very popular. This one, this sort of one to the minor six to the four to the five. Again, it's one to the minor six, which is A minor to the four to the five. This is a super popular one, especially back in the 50s, 60s with doo-wop and just sort of, um, I, I think of the song from Back to the Future. Earth angel, earth angel, will you be mine? And I think even like Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers, right? Oh, my love, my darling, I found good for your touch. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. Um, I'm not going to go through each of these, but you sort of, I wanted to type them out here as an example of what these chord progressions in the key of C would look like, okay? So that's something uh, I've, I've mapped out for you. Now, page two, I have a table of contents where I just talk about the rest of the things that are in the PDF, right? Um, and I'm going to dive through them now, talk about chord voicings, other ways to play the chords in the, in the key, which is important. Um, the fretboard, we'll get into some, into some quick tips, just general, like what are the quick things you might want to do when you're in the key of C? What is the key of C ripe for? Because every key has its sort of advantages, you know, unique things you can do. Um, easy ways to add one finger flourish, and then a list of song lessons I've made uh, in the key of C as well. So really quick, looking at some common chord voicings here, this is important. With the chords in the key of C, um, you're not you're not just tied down to these open positions, right? Now you could have a lot of fun with these open chords and do all kinds of cool stuff. But if you want to take it further, understand that you can play your C here, but you also can play your C here, right? Right? Third and fifth fret. You can also play it up here on the eighth, ninth, and tenth fret. So there's lots of options in addition to the open version. Now for the D minor, you have your open version, but then there's also the fifth fret sort of uh, A minor shaped bar, bar chord. And you also can do it uh, barred up here on the 10th and 12th fret. Okay, an E minor shaped bar chord. Same for the E minor. Basically, the E minor and the D, check this out. This is, this is where patterns are cool to help uh, to notice and help learn how things work. This shape and this shape are effectively the same. It's, it's just this root note, which is the only difference. Meaning, on the D minor, 5, 7, 7, 6, 5, right? If I take that same shape and slide it up, I get an E minor. Okay, seven nine nine eight seven. Same with that sort of uh, awkward bar chord, you know, 10, 12, 12, 10, 10, 10, 10. You could slide that up and do 10, uh, 12, and 14th fret. Can't really do it on my acoustic because I don't have the cutaway, but if you're playing on an electric or an, a guitar with a cutaway, you could do that as well. Um, the F chord, you have your barred version, of course, down here. It's not an open chord, but the most sort of popular other F I play is up here, eighth and 10th fret, using the A shape bar chord. 
Um, same for the G. You can take this, this basically the F major, and you just slide it up two frets, and then you get this G, and then this sort of um, 10 and 12 fret G is the same as this F. Again, so it's these patterns repeating. This is the A shape bar chord. And one of the lessons I link out here is the caged uh, chord shapes. Let's see if this works. This would be cool if it does. How the caged chord shapes work. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so um, I have a PDF there and uh, a whole other lesson on these caged chord shapes and how these things repeat. So that's a cool thing about this PDF is it links you out to that stuff, right? Now, a couple other things I do that are cool about these chords is um, I like playing triads on these thinnest couple strings, right? So you have your C major. You can sort of go up this, up the sort of stairs with the, the scales or the chord, so to speak, right? You have your D minor. And I'm just playing the thinnest three strings here. Right, your C, your D minor, your E minor, your F, your G, and then your C on the eighth and ninth fret, right? And you can do a D minor, an E minor, now this is cool because you can just do all kinds of cool riffing. Um, basically all I was doing there was starting on the C and I went down to the, the G and the F and back to the G and back to the C. Then I went up to the, you know, so you can sort of just do some cool riffing, you know, whether you're strumming or you could just do some sort of picking stuff too, right? Like if you have someone strumming a C chord, you could just be like to the D minor, to the G, back to the C, right? All kinds of cool stuff. I also have these on the right over here. Um, same idea, I'm just using this major, sort of um, taking the major chords and taking the thinnest string. So the F, the G, and then for the C, this is from the G shape bar chord, or G shape, yeah, bar chord in the cage system. So again, not gonna dive into these, check out my other lessons. Um, actually on triads, I don't really have anything for the key of C, so if you want a lesson on that, let me know, right? But there's all kinds of songs that use these, like the Poncho and Lefty, by uh, the version by Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard. The intro, I think it's like, All that is, is just going from uh, a sort of major chord on the, it's a D major. So it's, it's, it's going, it's using these voicings effectively. And anyway, tons of fun you can have there. If you want more lessons on this topic, let me know, right? There's also this idea of two finger chord voicings. This is a really fun one. This is this idea of, it's almost like blackbird chords, right? Um, so I learned this from Joni Mitchell case of you, right? That doesn't sound right. Okay, what I just played uses all these chords and I have a, a lesson, uh, the lesson I just showed you is right here, lesson 249. So you can get that um, if you're a Patreon supporter, you get the PDF as well, right? So this is a cool thing you can do in the key of C. I love these, these styles of chords. Now, the fretboard. Uh, really quick, I have three, three different maps here. And these are showing you, the, the quick way to read these just high level is over here you have um, the strings, thickest string, thinnest string, okay? These are the open strings right here, meaning E, A, D, G, B, E. I just played those one at a time. Now. I didn't push anything down. If I was to push down the first fret of the low E string, okay, that would be an F. I'm sort of being heavy handed with my highlighting here. That would be an F, right? If I was to play the fifth fret of the second string, that's an E. And hey, look, if I played an open first string, that's also an E. So uh, this one and this one are two different ways of playing the same note. Fretboard is a super handy thing to look at, to study, to play, you know, play your guitar while you're looking at it and just sort of realize these things. I also have the fretboard here with intervals, right? This was note names, which is helpful if you want like sort of absolute note name, right? Um, but the intervals are helpful because whatever key you're in, the one is your root, okay? The one is always gonna map to a C, in this case, because we're in the key of C. If we were in the key of F sharp, the one would be on the F sharps, okay? That's the idea of the one. The, the intervals are helpful because um, 
there, I mean, there's many, many reasons. But if you want to play, basically, uh, when the Saints go marching in, one, three, four, five, one, three, four, five. All I'm doing is playing one, three, four, five, one, one, three, four, five, three, one, three, two. Right. But I also could play that same melody up here, say on the um, tenth fret of the fourth string. So. Da, 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 right? So, I don't know. Intervals are cool because basically as your key changes, um, your, where your root, note, root notes are will change, but the patterns of these intervals will stay the same. So I've done all, all kinds of cool stuff. This poster I have behind me actually is the major scale positions and the caged chord system. That's a separate um, PDF. Um, that I did in lesson, uh, I think it's 385 or something like that. Um, 384 actually. A anyway, it's on my it's on my website. Um, let me just tell you now because I feel rotten if I give you the bad in bad information here. So if I go to uh, da -da 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 -da, go to my homepage, it's right here. The major scale positions in cage. So that's lesson um, 384. Okay. So anyway, and then I have a link out here to Fret Monster. So Fret Monster is my web tool, which shows you um, you can actually play with all this stuff. So if you wanted to change change your your key, you'd see the root notes change and all that sort of stuff. So let's go back here. Um, the final fretboard map I have down here is showing you um, the one, the threes, and the fives highlighted. This is helpful because it helps you sort of see. Hey, this is an open C shape, right? Technically, I'm playing this. Okay, that's an open C. But you also could play the 3555 five, five version of a C. And a major chord is all using the 1, the 3, and the 5 triads, or not triads, but intervals, right? You also could do this sort of G version, this G shape version of C. Now, this is really impractical to play, all the notes at least. Right? And then you also could play this E shaped version of the C. 8, 10, 10, 9, 8, 8. Those are all different C chords. This is why I love the fretboard. It's, it's very predictable. You learn the pattern once and it applies everywhere, right? So anyway, that's on page four for you. Now, let's get to some quick tips here. One of the things about the key of C is the F chord. Um, F is a bar chord. And when you're learning guitar, it's one of those chords that stands out as like, oh man, I don't want to play any song with that chord in it because it's hard. That, that was me. What I would tell myself is like, dude, you don't have to play this six string barred F. Honestly, I very rarely use this version of the F anymore. I'll typically just do this first version right here where I'm sort of um, just playing the middle four strings, right? Ring finger, I have the fingers mapped out here. Um, you also could do sort of this one where you're basically sort of just pushing down the thickest four strings, you're not doing the bar. And this is actually a good one to practice if you're leading up to the bar because it's getting these fingers mapped out where they need to go and then you just work on your index finger strength and you bar right here and right here and then you can play the regular F. You also can do this sort of baby F right here um, where we're sort of, you're barring the, the thinnest two strings. This one is a bit awkward, but it's, again, it's a helpful stepping stone to the full bar. Now, a lot of times though, you can just not even worry about barring at all. Ooh, sorry about that. And you can sort of play this F major seven in place of an F. When you leave this sort of thinnest string open, it adds this nice distinctive quality to it. It's gonna work for some songs better than others um, if, if the song calls for a regular F, but that's an option. Likewise, you could put your pinky down right there. Whoops. It's called an F add nine. It's full of hope, I find. So, da, 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 let's see. That exists. I have a whole video lesson on this topic if you want to see it. I link it there. Um, a quick other th thing to keep in mind with the key of C is the relative minor in the key of C is is A minor, right? And that's, um, I don't know if that applies to the chord or the entire, the entire key, but basically check this out. The notes in A minor scale are the same as the notes in the C major scale. It's only the... Um, starting point that changes, right? So th there's a similarity, even with those two chords. They use a lot of the same um, notes. They kind of sound similar, 
um, relative minor and relative major chords have that sort of that parity. A, a quick example, if I change keys for a second to D, the relative minor is B minor. Okay, you see how they kind of sound the same? If you're in G, the relative minor is E. E minor. So anyway, every key, every major key has a relative minor. In the key of C, it's A minor. Now, lots of times it's like, hey, is this song in the key of C major or is it in A minor? To me, in practical guitar theory terms, it's the same thing. They're using the same exact chords. The starting point's all that's different. All along the watchtower, or stairway to heaven, it's uh, A minor, G, and F. Right? And as we wind on the Right? Or um, all along the watchtower. Now, is that, again, uh, I guess you could say it's in the key of A minor, but it's using effectively these chords that are also in the key of C, just going from the minor six to the five to the four. Um, yeah, th that's that's sort of my, how, I, how I see things. They're, they're kind of just two sides of the same coin. Now, one thing I want to call out is this idea of G7 to C. This is the idea of the dominant seven chord, right? In music, let's go back to page one really quick. This one chord is your home. Whatever key you're in, the one is your home base. It just sounds sturdy and grounded. Now all the other chords have their own sound and their own feeling. The, the, the transition in any key that I think has the most satisfying resolve in a peaceful way is going from the five to the one, okay? Okay, the one is sturdy, the five is like triumphant and about to, you know, do whatever. And um, it sounds good when you go to the, the from the five to the one. But if you go from the five with a seventh tone added, it sounds like this. It's A, so this is basically a G7 is what I just played. Let me go back to my examples here. Um, the G7 resolving to the C sounds really good and really um, just like it's building up. Right, the triad over here. I'm sort of doing this one. You know, you could play the regular triad of 787. But that seventh tone, it just makes the tension even more pronounced. Even this one on the far right over here is kind of impractical to actually play, but... So I um, might not be doing the best job here of demonstrating this, but just notice lots of times in songs you're going to resolve from the 5 to the 1, and sometimes you'll resolve from the 5, the dominant 7th, which is the 5-7, or the basically, yeah, the, the Roman numeral 5 with a 7 next to it, to a 1. It's a dominant 7th to tonic transition. It sounds really good. Every single chord has one of these, right? In the key of D, it's A7. Right, a regular A. It sounds good also, but the A7, it sounds even more like it just the tension is even more built up and, and, and ready for itself. So anyway, I wanted to call that out. So G7 to C sounds good. Um, okay, what are some other ones? This is a quick cool one I want to call out, this idea of this quick transition from C to F to C. Now this particular voicing of the F is important. What's cool about this is that these highlighted notes, my finger is staying the same on both chords, right? It's just my middle finger and my pinky on my left hand that are changing. This is a fun little handy quick transition. Lots of, every different key, um, I, in my experience, the one to the four to the one, there's a quick and easy way to do it. An example is like in G, it's the G to the C to the G. When you're in D, um, Right, a D to a G to a D. When you're in A or E, it's going to be the E to the A to the E. Um, so I want to do a separate lesson only on these in every key because it's just a handy way to add quick flourish. But in the key of C, this is a general cool thing you can add. It sounds good and adds a little bit of just I don't know impressive sounding flourish. Um, common walk-ups and walk-downs. I have a whole bunch of lessons just on this topic. But this is this idea of um, 
in the C, in the notes in the C scale, right? We can sort of move between our chords by having notes between the chords that connect them, right? So let's look at this sort of one I'm playing up here, for example, first. I'm going to start on the C, right? And walk up to the F. And walk back down to the C. And walk back down to the G. And walk back up to the C. Now you could you could apply that to whatever musical styling you want, with, whether you're doing finger style or strumming, how long you're singing on the chords. You could approach it your own way musically, but those are the sort of funding fundamental building blocks. You also have this version here. This is something that the key of C is actually really good for, is an easy walk down that uses a lot of these notes, right? So we have our C and our G over B. That's a B bass note to an A minor, to a G go even lower to the F. And what's under the F? If you keep going backwards in the scale, the E minor. Now, this, this low E, this is the lowest note on the guitar. You can't go any lower. Normally, we would go to a D, right? But we're out of strings. So typically, uh, well, I have it here going back up to the F and back up to the G. Now, this is the same exact progression, I think, that the canon in D uses, right? You get the idea. It's like graduation time. You get the idea. So anyway, lots of lessons here you can have fun with. Uh, okay, now easy one finger flourish. This is a cool one. The key of C, um, there's some cool things you can do. One of them is this idea of adding a pinky on the thinnest string, third fret. You can do that on the C. You can do it on the G. Those, are, those remain C's and G's when you do that, right? The F, you can do it, it makes it an F add 9. The A minor, you can do it, it makes it an F, A minor 7. An A minor 7, no F. And on the E minor, you can do it too. Okay? Now, again, I'm just showing you the building blocks here. You need to arrange these in a way that makes sense for whatever the song you're playing is, right? Uh, there's some Ben Harper song, Roses From My Friends. I, I forget the exact tab, but it's one of the first songs I ever learned, and it's the first song I remember doing this, and I'm like, oh man, that's really cool. And actually, the first song I ever wrote back when I was in college, it's really a lick I wrote. It was a four chord thing where I had this note constant on all of them, right? It's going to give your pinky a good workout, but that's a cool thing you can do. This other idea is adding and removing a single in, uh, finger, your index finger specifically. So check this out. Like on the, um, the far left here, the C, the highlighted note is our finger removed. You can do it on the F. You kind of always want to go back to the main version of the chord. It sounds more stable. You can do it on the G. On the G, you're going to put the finger down when it's normally not down. And on the A minor. Now that riff I just showed you. It's exactly this. Keeping my, my pinky down, like I showed you here, and I'm sort of taking my finger on and off on these four chords exactly. So, um, lots of cool stuff you can do, key of C. The last one is this idea of taking off your middle finger. You can do it on the C. You can do it on the F and the G. On the fifth string, you can do it as well. Now this is something that you'll see uh, Tom Petty does. He puts all these together in a few different songs. So like Wildflowers, I think is like F, like. So he's doing this just sort of middle finger thing in Wildflowers. Learning to Fly is maybe a better example.
See my lessons for the exact tab. I've forgotten it, but I've played it in the past and it's, and it's all there. So this is a lot of cool stuff you can do in the key of C. If you want to add flourish to what you're playing in the key of C, lots of good stuff here. Check out these other lessons where I kind of dive into this topic a bit more. Okay, and the last thing here is just all the songs I've made that are in the key of C. These um, have video lessons. Most of them have sheet music you can get. Um, you just click on the link and nothing compares to you. I like that one. It's the Chris Cornell cover of the uh, Prince song. So in this case, you can watch my video lesson. You can buy the sheet music. It's licensed. Uh, so this is, this is an awesome song. Basically, all these songs are going to be using a lot of the concepts I show you elsewhere in this PDF. So you get this PDF here and you can just click on any of these and, and you know, get out to the, get out to the song and, um, you know, and learn them. And you kind of see like, oh, this one has like these bass notes and um, where it's, you know, it's a one, six, four, five, uh, it's using those chords, nothing too crazy. But yeah, so um, this is it. This is the eight pager here. I just went through everything that's in there. Again, let me know if there's anything that you want me to make a lesson for that I, I sort of brushed over. Um, and um, any other feedback or any other things you would want to know how to do in the key of C, let me know. I want to make these again for every, uh, every main major key just because every key has its own unique things and I, I want to sort of capture them and I think this will be a very high value, hopefully universally helpful thing. So that's it. Um, you can get this at my website, lesson388playsongnotes.com. Again, thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. It makes this possible and I'm trying to always evolve and improve what I'm making available to you all. For example, one thing I'm doing with this is using just hyperlinks in the, in the documents. A lot of you have asked about this. You'll say like, oh, I click on this and it doesn't work. Like some PDF readers will turn my uh, handwriting into, into a URL, but this doesn't take you anywhere. I always assume you'd have to just manually type it, right? But I do realize it's very practical, especially um, in this case where it's like, oh, I wanna learn about caged. How do I do it? And it just takes you right there. Like you can't beat that, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, I showed you that one already. You get the idea. So there's lots of linked stuff in here. I'm taking your feedback from there. Um, and uh, that's about it for this one. So I'm going to take off, y'all. Thanks all for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, see you in the next one. Until then, my friends, bye-bye.